Here I am in Bethany at the tomb of Lazarus. This is where Lazarus was buried and also resurrected. But at the time, Jesus was up in the Galilee, and he was told that his very dear friend Lazarus had passed away. But instead of running down here to Bethany to be with Mary, Martha, Lazarus' sisters, he stayed up in the Galilee with the disciples. When he finally did come down here to Bethany, Lazarus had been dead four days. Mary and Martha were probably in this vegetable crying and, and suffering, you know, because her brother had passed away. But Mary composed herself and went to Jesus and said, Lord, I know this is your will. And Jesus said, Mary, you have faith and therefore you will see the glory of God. Which, that's really amazing because I think this story has a lot of glory in it. So Jesus prayed. He, uh, now that's something that's interesting about this before I go on is that this book of the Bible holds the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. So Jesus being understanding our grieving, he actually wept for his friend Lazarus' death. So Jesus prayed, Father, I know that you hear my prayers, but for everyone around me, let them also know that I am the Son of God. Now that's a pretty powerful explanation. So right then, Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Those words are very powerful. Right then, the tomb, the wall of the stone of the tomb rolled away. Lazarus came out bound in God's cloth like they would do. The, the burial ritual is very important because they wrapped him in God's cloth and put anointing oil and ointments on them. So the smell only lasted, the good smell only lasted about three days. That's why when Mary said, Jesus, he's already been in there four days, he stinks. But here's the secret. Jewish people, why did Jesus wait four days? Why didn't he come on the second or third day after, the, after he passed away? Because Jewish people believe that on the third day, the body, till the third day, the body of the soul of, of a person hovers over them. So if Jesus would have had Lazarus rise from the dead on the second or third day, it wouldn't have been a big deal to Jewish people because they would say, well, the soul's probably still hanging around and that's not that big a miracle. But the fact that he had it on the fourth day was after the Jewish traditions of the body and the soul still being next to each other. So that's really important. And also when Mary said it stinks, Lazarus came out of the tomb right then, and Jesus said, unbind him. Can you imagine seeing someone come out from the dead that you were grieving for four days, and he comes out? So right then they ran and unbound him. Something good about this story is that we are all in bondage to something, to something. But Jesus says, come forth. So whatever it is you're in bondage to, it could be uh, drugs, alcohol, um, and it could be anything, actually. It could be something sh small. Um, you could be relieved of bondage by God. He wants to just free you from all of that. So Lazarus came up. But the problem here is that the Pharisees and the Sadducees from Jerusalem were here, too, watching this. There were so many people here in Bethany. It's such a beautiful place and so well-loved. So the Sadducees and the Pharisees were here. This resurrection miracle is what sealed Jesus' crucifixion because the Sadducees and the Pharisees could follow him around doing little miracles, blind man, uh, walking, all that stuff. But the fact that Jesus did the resurrection was, de was Jesus' death certificate. The Sadducees and the, and the Pharisees went forth to Jerusalem and started the whole procession of Jesus' crucifixion. But Jesus knew that. That's why he wanted them to know, I am the Son of God. He didn't do it in the Galilee. He didn't do it when he was 16. He knew his time of appointment was then. He was the Son of God who takes away the sin of the world. He knew he was going to be the Passover lamb coming up that next week. Right here is where this all began. Lazarus was in Isis' tomb. Something else I want to tell you that actually after being here, I see it for myself. Mary was very wealthy. Do you remember Mary washed Jesus' feet with the anointing oil and, and, and Judas had a fit about it? And saying, you know, that's wealth. They could have sold that for money. Well, I've always read that Mary and Martha were probably wealthy, a wealthy family, because that, you know, it's like a year's wage in that bottle. After being here, their home was absolutely beautiful. The mosaic showed that this was a very wealthy family. So, but you know what? They gave it all and followed Jesus. Okay, that's just really important. I want to take you guys down into this tomb that Lazarus rose from. And I am so thankful one day I know I will rise in Christ. That's the promise we have. 
Because just like Jesus told Mary, one day you will see the glory of God. She saw it here, and I know she saw it again because she was a believer. She knew he was the Messiah, and she knew he was her Savior. So let's go down into the tomb. Here I am standing at the door that Lazarus would have exited, bound right here at this door to meet Jesus. What is really interesting is Jesus said, Nazareth, come forth. Why is that significant? Because if Jesus would have just said, come forth, he is the son of God, all the tombs would have been emptied. But he called forth his friend because Jesus knows you by name. He knows you by name. Follow me on Instagram, YouTube, but the best thing to do is to come to Israel. Stand for the resurrection of not just Lazarus, but of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, occurred. Come to Israel. I promise you, you will never be the same. Come forth.